I see I got a lot of stuff here working on this engine. Let's go out the other room. Okay. Okay, this is what we call engine room two. This is the Alco that drives two 400, uh, correction, drives two 1,000 kW DC generators. That's an uh, Alco, it's a 16 cylinders, 2,685 horsepower. Right. That all that is in that little brochure. Okay. For you. Uh, you said you wanted pictures of it? Yeah, yeah. How about that? Whatever you want to get. Okay. We'll have a load and we're not going up the hill. Right. If we're coming down the hill and coming back, we can move. Okay. We don't have a problem. And these are the, are these the identical engines that were? These are original engines. They've never been out. Mm -hmm. They're still here. We have done, uh, changed out some pistons. We've changed some solder heads. Uh, we've changed out, uh, you know, things like this. But the crankshaft, the main structure is still right where it was the day they set it in here some 35 years ago. So is this uh, based on a uh, on an engine that was we've been used for? Uh, I understood that it uh, these ship. actually came from a locomotive, locomotive. type setup okay. because of the DC generator and the type stationary you know type operations it does. Uh -huh. uh, it was set up uh, from a locomotive out. Okay. In mind. It must be incredibly noisy in here when it's running, is that We're right? We're about 100, if you stand right here, you're about 110 dB. Okay. Get, during the summertime on a movie, it's to about 120 degrees in here. Right. Is there any need to be in here while it's Oh, running? yes. Yeah? If this thing springs a leak, or we get a leak down through there, or an oil leak, or we break an injector line, or anything like that, we need to know right away so we can secure it. You don't want to be going propelling up a hill and have something like that happen. Sure. And then you can't stop and repair it. So how was this? Was this built on site or was built right where it's sitting? Okay. This particular one in particular. Right. It's a CT1. Standard. In fact, these right here had just came out, and uh, we actually take off the roof. Well, actually, these took these through the floor. But these are the main exciters that drive the uh, DC propelled motors and the AC. Um, generator. Uh, they were in here for 35 years. Uh -huh. They had never had anything done to them. Right. We had them taken out, had them rebuilt, and put back in this past year. How's that right? It's a 21 kW uh, cider generator in this show. <laughs> it was just kind of interesting. The uh, fact you spent eight hours to get 30 seconds, you know. Of, yes. That's our backup exciter set there. Uh -huh. we have, most everything we have here is redundant. This is the backup set. That set went actually through the ceiling. Because through the ceiling? Oh, it came, came in through the ceiling. That, that's where we uh, normally, this engine has to come out, for instance, to go out that way. Oh, is that right? And these generators, again, uh, this is another item we just had done in the last 12 months. <coughs> and that's these DC propelled generators. Yeah. They had never been out of here since they were put in here 35 years ago. We'd have them taken out, sent to Jacksonville, had them uh, inspected, steam cleaned, uh, refurbished, rebaked, and brought back to us. Okay. So they're just hatches up there? Or they're... No, they're actually bolted on panels. All right. So we had to unbolt. Each panel has got about 96 uh, bolts in it, I think. We've got to take off a number of panels. We had to take off seven yeah. in order to get this one out. Then we had to take an additional four off to get this one out. Okay. That's the 750 kW AC generator. That supplies all the power, AC power, to run our lighting, to run our exciters, to run our jail pumps, to run the steering pumps, the, uh, the supercharger. The, the exciters, are, are they, what were the exciters? Exciters excite the generators which produce the power. Right, okay. So what, what, what is that process? It, it, well, uh, it, it, for instance, it starts up the generator. Uh -huh. it, go ahead. All right. It starts off with if the engineer uh, starts to get power to go, 
it sends a signal to an amplodyne, which in turn sends a signal to the exciter. The exciter starts coming up, producing uh, field currents here, which in turn, this is already running, which starts producing DC power. Right. And that is what goes out to the motors. All right, now we start turning. They'll start real, real slow, and they get faster and faster mm -hmm. as, as the current applies. Which in turn, like I said, is the loop that it takes to make it. Happen. This is part of the fire system that they got shut down right now. Right. If it had been on when you made that flash, chances are it would set it off and be dumped by power. What's that right? What's that be using? The motors are fine. We can change the fans out, double the exhaust. I mean, double the airflow, and a bunch quieter. Okay. They're running about 90 dB in, uh, level, just the fans running themselves. You heard that when you came in on the other end. Yeah. This, uh, by changing that out, that'll help reduce the total overflow noise in here. Sure. <coughs> but those are some of the filters that came out of there. We're replacing them, getting rid of them. And this unit here? Is that this right there, that's the de uh, dehumidifier. Okay. They had, uh, during the time they were up here, we had some leaks. We turned it on to help keep, try to keep as much moisture out of here as we could. Normally, ventilation is all it takes to keep it down. Right. And you were talking about the leveling system, so let's go back to the other end on that. the gel system operate. That's the button he uses to jack it up and jack it down with when we're going under an MOP in the VAB for instance. Sure. We okay. pull under there, we jack it up, and then we lift that up to clear 18 inches before moving any further. You need that screen turned on? That might be yeah, good please, for him yeah. if you would please. Oh that was complicated. <laughs> yeah we just now gone to this on this car. This one here has yet to make a loaded move. Right. So it's a Windows-based yeah. operating system. Hey, just like so I said, we're just now getting into it, 
And uh, as it's gone, uh, we got a manometer system that's on the other collar, and the uh, it's an old, uh, can't get parts for it anymore, and they're not repairable anymore. So what we have to do now is go back and uh, upgrade. We're upgrading to this system that we get. This is still years away, yo, know, years behind the current technology. As a, yeah. So what was the old system? The old called the uh, Metro. Metro. Metro system. Yeah. This is part of our uh, laser alignment system when we go in the VAB or we go in at the pads with an orbiter on board or empty MLP into the VAB. Mm -hmm. They get it set up based on the MLP and based on the crawler we're using. They'll set the numbers based on the high bay also. It's all three of them, every one is different. Yeah. So they'll set the counts in here. On the bell of the MLP there's actually some laser receivers. We'll set a transmitter up in the bay. As we start in, they'll pick up that signal and they'll bring it around and you'll see in the cab when we get there, there's a red line and they'll line the lines up. And once they get lined up and we come in and come to a stop, we're normally in one eighth of an inch or less being perfectly square in the building. Once we set it down on the mounts, we're normally around a quarter of an inch square. Wow. And was it uh, was there a laser system used before? Or well, before for a long time, uh, the laser was put on what, in the early 90s? Late 80s, early 90s. Somewhere along there. Prior to that, it was all done by eye. Is that right? Today, we still use the same method coming in over the, uh, the refurb site. Mm -hmm. We strike a, stretch a piano wire across the tops of the mounts. And their mounts are supposedly, quote unquote, supposedly level. And they are straight up, perpendicular, straight up and down. As we come across those mounts, the guys, we got magnets we put on the pins of the uh, MLP. Yeah. And they will watch it as it goes down that wire. And they'll tell the cabs. Give me an eighth degree left or right, or actually north, south, east, or west, depends on where we're at. And they'll give them that degree, and when he gets back online, they'll straighten it back out. And they'll follow that wire. And we come in to as under a half an inch, square that way. But we have a plus or minus on laser, we have a plus or minus one inch, and on uh, I, we have a plus or minus two inches. Okay. Okay, right now we're in the process of trying to quiet this place down a lot more, doing a lot of sound attenuations mm -hmm. here. He's certified in all the aspects of the crawler operations. And uh, right now I think we have three people that are qualified on KSC to sit in that position. So we're trying to get some more people uh, qualified in there. Originally, this is about what the crawler looked like. All that instrument panel? Yeah. At home, I've got a picture of it. And it's the entire wall, whole setup, oh, and all right? analog meters. Oh, okay. And everything you've done was analog meters. So, are the, are, is the other one identical to this in this configuration? No, the, no it's pretty much. You know, if you walked in, first thing you see is the metros versus the touch screens. Yeah. Uh, that's the first thing you'll see. The second thing you will notice is. Uh, well, basically, that's about the only thing you will notice. So the other one's all metrics. Is it? Oh, okay. Right. It just doesn't have the upgraded screens in it yet. That's mm -hmm. the next one we'll do. Probably sometime after Christmas. Right. Well, this could happen. We may get some bells and whistles. Go by first. Yeah, okay. You don't get in. <laughs> I know a little bit about this place, but not too awful much. These here are basically, if I remember correctly, is basically you like your um, gear shift. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a forward. Uh, they will give which cab they want to have control. Right. You, uh, th well, basically, this is the steering section. One of them is the um, what they call great circle, and then you got independent, and then you got crab. That's the different modes that the crawler can actually move in. Okay. Um, 
normally if going out the crawlerway, we're in grade circle. We go up on the ML, uh, up on the uh, refurb site, lock, uh, pad A or B, yeah. or the VAB, then we go in independent mode to where, like I was telling you earlier, these are the lasers, these are the lines, they, they line okay, up. Uh, so each cab can do its own alignment right. for that end of the crawler. This is your steering wheel. As you can see, it's in degrees. Uh -huh. It's broken down over here into even smaller increments, one quarter degree increments, that they actually move into. Here's our speedometer. And as you can see, it's got a, shows a max speed of two, but we run the thing at about nine tenths of a mile per hour. Okay. That's max speed. It will take it with a bird on it or any other time. It shakes so bad up above that. Oh, so, right. so we just keep it at that. Uh, this is your actual steering angle. This is your desired. If I tell you to give me a one eighth a degree, you'll put in one eighth a degree. Mm -hmm. And as it comes around, you'll watch it here to okay, go to that. Again, yep. uh, again I, I'm not too sure what this one is. This tells them the over the height. For instance, we get to the base of the pad, going up the pad, we'll go up, uh, we'll go what they call a ramp. Mode, ramp mode, the crawler automatically goes into the three foot level, all the way around on level ground. As we start up the pad, it's sloped like this, well the MLP will stay level as we go. Right, up. okay. And the, yeah. level off as we go in. So this is the, is the brake pedal then, is it? No, that's, yeah, that's actually the service <laughs> brake. This is emergency stop. I think this breaks out the, uh, uh, shuts off the exciter, which uh -huh. shuts off the DC power. And it brings it pretty much to a screeching halt. This right here is the actual uh, command voltage that's being applied in the forward or reverse, depending on the direction of travel. This is your gas pedal. Oh, okay. And this is, tells them that the exciter's on. If the exciter's on, they start applying current, they will get motion. Sure. And you'll get see with the disc. Uh, it's a little hard to see, okay. but you can imagine. Stand right here and look down, and you can see what the engineers see. When they start the DC propel, oh, okay. they look at those discs and watch them start turning. And do they form part of the brake mechanism? It is the brake mechanism down okay. there on it. Also, the DC uh, propel uh, generators act as brake. Coming down 